A very warm welcome to the art vlog with me, George Dopamine. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button for previews and reviews of exhibitions across London, the South East and beyond. Now, are you going to be in Hyde Park in the summer? Are you a fan of science fiction? Do you want to meet some alien life forms? Well, maybe this show at the Serpentine Gallery by the French artist Dominique Gonzalez um, Forster is for you. This is called Alienarium 5. It promises, according to the literature from the Serpentine, to provide a meeting space for aliens and humans. Um, for Gonzalez Furster, or Furster, sorry, is a um, artist who doesn't so much produce work to sit on walls as dynamic, uh, interactive, immersive experiences. She is probably best known in Britain for her 2008-2009 turbine hall installation, TH2058, when she envisaged a London that was plagued by incessant rain, which made habitation more and more difficult. And I think this show gives us a hint as to what we can expect in the Serpentine Gallery today as well. Because um, it's, it's, she's an artist who wants to immerse us and take us on a journey where we will experience and feel. This is called Alienarium 5, as I said. It is free and it is on until September the 4th. There's two things I should say with that. You do have to book in advance. Um, also, just one other thing, there is a virtual reality experience as part of this show, which I'm really excited to experience. You can only book that at the gallery itself. You can't book that on a line in advance. And again, I imagine that that might get quite busy because apparently it's limited to five um, VR headsets at one time. Anyway, come and join me as we head inside Alienarium 5 and um, meet some aliens, maybe. blast of experimental art there. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed that show. I really like the concept of Alienarium 5 as an interspecies meeting place, this idea of aliens not being threatening. Um, and I especially, obviously, the undoubted highlight was this piece, which I've already shown you quite a bit of. I'll just give you another blast, um, the Meta Panorama, and it's accompanying work, bibliography. Bibliography with these representations of books as cushions, much science fiction and other works as well, which was Gonzalez first as a um, working with literature and bringing that into the, um, bringing that into the work as well. Um, the collage 
Meta Panorama was took me back to the Dardice works of the 1920s. I absolutely loved it. There was so much to see, so many representations of humans, alien life forms, um, uh, buildings, um, and the world, the earth and space as well. And so I spent a good 40 minutes lying down just exploring um, this wonderful piece of work. I have to say that the representation within this collage, which as I say, took me back to the Dardoist works of the 1920s, was really broad. You, you, you end up like looking for people you know, like Princess Diana or Alan Turing, Hilma of Klimt and the Teletubbies, hopefully you can see here, um, David Bowie aptly as the man who fell to earth, and lots of intergalactic species as well. I love the way that Gonzalez Fuster's integrated lots of different art into this piece, especially um, British art. Can you spot here Henry Mort's uh, arch, a sculpture which some of you might know? Or over here, Turner's eruption of Vesuvius, which was integrated really nicely into the universe and, and didn't look at all out of place. And in fact, Gonzalez first has rather cheekily integrated her Tate uh, turbine hall installation that I showed you earlier, TH2058, into the piece as well as a reference to probably her most well-known work in Britain before this point. So all of this was tremendous fun. Um, it was meant to be a sort of riff on Gonzalez Furster's um, love affair with science fiction. And it involved a collaboration with lots of different artists. As well as, as well as being a um, fun um, piece, I would also say that um, this piece has a really serious message. Obviously, in the um, past decade, Europe has had several waves of, of, of refugees and migrants approaching it, both from without um, and also recently from Ukraine. And the signs that you can see here, welcoming aliens and even providing their own parking spaces for their, for their spaceships or whatever it is they do to travel to get to Earth, is obviously a metaphor for how Gonzalez Fuster believes that we should treat um, people who are coming from outside Europe and outside our countries in. And I really like that as well. So the Meta Panorama and the Bibliography made the exhibition for me worth coming to. I would say that the um, that the one disappointment with the exhibition was how the other pieces, the lesser pieces, did not hang together as well and pack such a big punch. I found the VR experience fun, but it was nowhere near as visceral as some VR experiences that I've um, taken place in, in art galleries around the world. It was an attempt to take you to the alien, um, the alien's world, if you like, and you're taken to, a, to a, a world in space and there's some shapes and lights, and obviously it's got that wonderful 3D effect of VR. But it didn't, it didn't transport me in the way that the Meta Panorama did. When you're in the Meta Panorama, it's like you're in this really weird space between Earth and uh, alien life. Whereas the VR experience, sadly, did not do that to me. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't necessarily go for it. I still think it's worth it. There are five different headsets as well. And I only tried one today because um, you have to book them. And so I would definitely come back and try another one. Um, probably my favourite piece of work after the Meta Panorama was called La Planet Clause. You can see these little peepholes here. Unfortunately, I couldn't get a shot of it, but if you imagine through these peepholes, there's this alien life form and um, with masses of hair, absolutely loads, and a really distinctive smell. And so as you're peeping through, you can just about make out this shape and waves and waves of hair, and then this very, very um, distinctive smell, which isn't disgusting, but is not kind of very pleasant either, if you see what I mean. And that was quite interesting. But again, I didn't know if it necessarily um, linked to the Meta Panorama um, very well. Uh, the Chambre Human is this big bed where you are encouraged to lie down and contemplate um, meeting alien life forms. And that's an interesting piece. Um, but again, and, and that's next door to the VR experience, so maybe I should have laid down there before going into the VR and contemplated it. Um, outside, um, there are two works, one of which you can see here, which you sort of is on the outside of the gallery. You have to look in through these windows. You can hopefully, if I'm quiet for a bit, hear the music as well and this 
Um, this piece is called Hollerama 5 and it's a um, it's on the outside of the gallery and um, if you look through the windows you can see this kind of display which which moves around and creates a kind of Milky Way-esque apparition um, it was interesting it was good and um, probably my least favorite work was the sculpture which you can see here which is called um, sculpture in remembrance of the coming alien um, and that was that was uh, unfortunately some dogs took a rather displeased view as you can see here yeah uh, but anyway um, would I recommend this show overall yeah I definitely would mainly as you can probably tell for the meta panorama um, it's on until the 4th of September and um, I will definitely be coming back because I want to try another of the VR experiences. It's something that you could, like me, if you're a massive lover of contemporary art, come to uh, for its own sake. It's that good, it's, you know, the meta panorama is that excellent. However, you might also want to combine it if you're in Hyde Park for one of the big events, gigs that's going on over the summer, or if you're going to a prom at the Albert Hall, or another event at the Albert Hall as well. Or obviously you could um, combine it as well with uh, the building I'm just coming up to now, and I'm going to go in and cheekily have a little the Victoria and Albert Museum but it's definitely worth it and Fiesta Gates has got a new pavilion coming called Black Chapel that's open from the 10th of June so maybe you should hold fire until then and visit Black Chapel and Alienarium 5 together I would say as well that it's suitable for kids it's fun it's one of those kind of experiences that you could spend 10 minutes in or like me spend near a 45 50 minutes in there's a lot of smells there's a lot of things to look for overall I would give this I'm umming and ahhing between a 6.5 and a 7 I will certainly remember the meta panorama and bibliography exhibit at the heart I really love that I've already been thinking about it and no doubt will over the next few few days so um, yeah do go along this is free I mean, we are so lucky to have these kind of free exhibitions in, in Britain. Do come along. Book, remember to book in advance and um, to subscribe to the Art Vlog and press the notification bell for more reviews coming up. I'm very much looking forward to hopefully going to White Cube Bermondsey to see the Andreas Gersky show soon.